Guys, we have an unexpected finding to report to you in this video update. So we will go over the latest V-band measurement from David Lane using a new centered 25 data point simple moving average and show that Tabby Star is in a steep long-term dimming decline. And we will show a couple of peculiar surprises that were discovered from this new method, which indicates that recent dust papers that were written on the long-term trend will probably have to be discarded in the dustbin. It was mentioned in the comment section of our last video update that there is a temporal delay, you know, a time delay between the measured data and the simple moving average curve. And we were using a simple moving average curve that had approximately a 12 data point time delay against the measured data and the resulting curve. But in the comment section, a great suggestion was made to address this time delay to get a real-time curve without sacrificing the accuracy of the shape of the light curve and keeping the effect of the variability of the measured data at a minimum. So we went back to our historical data and applied a centered 25 data point simple moving average and we were really impressed with the results. It takes out the latency problem we had with the regular simple moving average and yet retains the ability to take out a lot of the data variability and preserves the accurate shape of the light curve. It also creates a weighted moving average on the front part of the curve that gets slightly adjusted as time moves forward. It's really an eloquent solution and one we will adopt and implement from this day forward. So these are all the V-band measurements taken by David Lane over a 26 month time period. And this is the centered 25 data point simple moving average light curve. Notice that the light curve now correlates with the ebb and flow of the data points in real time. You can take this centered simple moving average light curve to the bank. This is the shape of the long-term light curve of Tabby Star in real time. And this is the superimposed best fit curve showing the accelerating long-term dimming for most of this time period. Notice that if we extend the shape of this curve, it intersects the last data point we showed in our last video update. It's probably just a coincidence, but it speared that last data point down the center. Anyway, here is the completion of the best fit curve, including the brightening and then recovering part of the light curve. The statistics we are showing on this chart are identical to what we showed in our last video update, except that the dates are shifted over earlier by 12 data points to correct for the latency. So let's zoom in and now go ahead and add the one data measurement that David Lane was able to take between the cloudy weather at his location. So this is what the long-term light curve looked like on January 10th, and here we add in the measurement that was taken on January 19th. The new measurement continues to show the light at a level consistent with a full recovery from the temporary brightening event. And this is the best fit curve. Notice the slope on the right side of this curve. We are in a very steep long-term dimming trend right now. Bruce Gary may owe us a dinner after all. So let's now take out the best fit curve and all the data points and zoom back out so that we can show you something very incredible that has us scratching our heads. This is a vertically stretched version of the long-term light curve of Tabby Star to better look at the slopes of this curve. And we are placing the yellow linear segment that best approximates the slope of the recovering portion of the light curve. And this is the best fit curve of the accelerating long-term dimming. So now let's zoom in on this portion of the curve and compare the slope of the recovering portion of the light curve with the instantaneous slope of the accelerating long-term dimming curve between the red dotted lines. So if you take this yellow segment and move it over to the left, keeping its slope intact, what we find is that the slope of the recovering portion is nearly identical to the slope of the accelerating long-term light curve at this flux level. It's an almost perfect parallelogram. It's almost like the long-term dimming completely shut down for 71 days and then suddenly turned back on and resumed at the same exact slope downwards as if nothing ever happened. If this continues on for a few more weeks, this channel will declare that the accelerating long-term dimming has re-established itself. 
we bet the professionals weren't expecting this. And if the long-term dimming continues, all the papers written on the long-term dimming saying it's just dust will probably have to be thrown in the garbage can where they belong. Those that bet against the continuance of the long-term dimming trend are on the wrong side of that bet. Guys, remember, just because something is published does not make it necessarily correct or the truth. Those people are no smarter than you or I. So now we ask you, our viewers, what in nature would retain the same instantaneous slope after a hiatus of 71 days and then pick right back up where it left off? Dust? We don't think so. There is a lot more going on here than just simple dust. There is an order and structure to this long-term light curve, guys. The short-term dimming, yeah, that looks like dust, but the long-term dimming is a different animal. Mark our words on that. Well, guys, wish for clear weather in Nova Scotia so that we can get a lot more data to continue monitoring this star. We hope you have a good rest to your weekend, and we will see you in our next video update.